Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to another video. So a few weeks ago now I did a video on good and bad investment houseplants and quite a few of you told me in the comments, hey that's cool and all, that's great, but what about plants that are good, that are low-end investment plants? So plants that are high double digits or low treble digits, something a little bit more accessible. And I hear you, you are absolutely right, that is a great idea. Today's video is all about out lower end house plants that I think are good investments. Will you make thousands? No. Will you definitely make a bit of a side hustle? Absolutely. All of the plants in this video are round about high double digits to low treble digits. If you are new to this channel and you have no idea what on earth is going on, you're probably thinking, hey, how do you even know what's a good investment? And the answer is, I kind of don't, but I do have some experience. If you don't know me, my name is Kaylee Ellen, and I'm the proud owner of the Rare Plant Shop, where I keep probably upwards of around around 7,000 rare plants. That's a lot. And believe me, there are some decisions that I've made quite good on over my career and I have had my fair share of disasters as well. So I would say I have some decent experience in investing houseplants and taking a gamble on what I think is essentially fashionable. So what do I mean by is a plant a good investment? Basically, if I buy the plant, how likely is it that I'm going to make money off it via taking cuttings of it and selling? So I'm not talking about buying 100 plants, I'm just talking about buying the one plant. This could, of course, depend on a few factors. Now, I know in my previous videos, I've given you a few different factors to not really score these plants on, but just to talk about. However, with low-end plants, a lot of these factors kind of go out of the window, such as availability, because obviously, if the plant is a lower price, it's probably more available. So with that in mind, we're going to keep it a little bit more casual today. I'm going to just give you my opinions on the plant and it's going to be a little bit more fluid than normal. So if that sounds fun for you, then keep on watching. These plants are in no particular order and we're going to start with what I think is possibly the greatest affordable rare house plant that they probably is. Yes, really, I know that's a strong statement to make, but I will tell you why it is so good in just a moment. But the first plant we're going to talk about today is the Philodendron Burley Marks Variegated. Or Variegata. Take your pick. So you can buy the variegated philodendron burly marks for around about high double digits. Some places, of course, will offer this plant for three digits. I think I recently sold some on my shop and they were low three digits. However, they were huge plants. I'm talking huge plants. I'm talking about maybe a foot and a half tall in some cases. So you should be able to get quite a lot of plant for your money if you shop around. These are reasonably available. The part though where I feel this plant actually really excels is in the propagation. Right. Now, not only are these plants just generally easy to propagate, but I have to take my hat off to how they actually grow. And I should have some footage showing you how they grow. The best way I can describe it is kind of like a tree on steroids. These things just multiply over and over and over again. So if you can see where this is going, obviously you can get a reasonable amount of return on your investment. It is not a super large investment, but I have seen, at least in the UK, a single leaf cutting of this plant with decent variegation going for around 30 pounds. That's quite a lot considering you can get a plant for not too much more than that. And the rate of propagations you're probably going to get off this plant are nuts. They root really well, they can handle being underwatered an awful lot, they multiply like no tomorrow. You get a really good learning opportunity to start grooming this plant back and then seeing how it performs and really learning how to control variegation because that's part of what makes a plant a good investment as well. It relies on your ability to care for the plant, and in the case of variegated plants, how easy it is to control variegation. But if you're thinking, oh my gosh, no, I don't want any variegation, I don't want the stress of that, do not worry because I do have a few other plants in this list that do not have any variegation at all. In terms of where this plant is on the market, honestly, it's quite stable. Obviously, it's had a steady decline, but I mean a steady decline. It's even come back a few times, and I honestly think it's because the plant grows so quickly and you can make a good return on your investment quite fast. It's just a brilliant plant and I can't recommend it enough because it is a great rare plant for beginners. It's a great investment plant for beginners. It's a great variegated plant for beginners. It honestly hits on all three. So all things considered, do I think it's worth it? Absolutely. You should have one of these in your collection if you want to learn how to take care of rare plants, learn how to keep variegation and make a little bit of cash on the side. 
So another really good investment plant is actually the Philodendron Gloriosa. Now this plant has been hailed as sort of the classic heart-shaped philodendron probably since the beginning of time and I don't really suppose it's going to change. Obviously there are a few heart-shaped philodendrons that everyone covets but Gloriosum is definitely one of them. The thing about Gloriosum is it's one of the easiest ones to take care of so that's pretty good. That's a nice little advantage. Depending on size, a Gloriosum will set you back high double digits or low triple digits, just depending on what type it is. I must mention that you can get different types of Gloriosum, so some can have hardly any white veins on them, some can be more white veins, some can be round, some can be darker. There's quite a lot to choose from in the realm of Gloriosum, so if you fancy a certain sort of thing, shop around because there are some interesting choices there. So because Philodendron Gloriosum is a crawler, it's actually quite easy to propagate. Now there's a few ways you can do this. But my favourite way to do this is actually to grow the plant across multiple pots because as Gloriosum is a crawler, it does not climb upwards, so you would not put it on a pole. What it does do, however, is climb along a surface such as this. So what you can do if you're really worried about propagating it, take your normal plant pot with the plant in. Once it reaches the edge of the pot, you can put more pots underneath, perhaps on a windowsill or something like that, and allow the plant to keep growing and keep rooting. Once you have enough of a plant that you'd like to propagate, you can actually cut along the stem and leave them rooted in the pots and continue to grow them as separate plants. So propagating this plant, as well as other crawlers of course, is very, very easy. Not only that, but I do think it's a plant that's not going to go out of style very quickly, so I think that's pretty advantageous if you want to make a little bit of cash from it. In terms of where they sit in the market, I would say the trend has gone down, but that's probably just due to the fact they are easy to propagate if you know what you're doing. Not everyone has success with crawlers, not everyone loves crawlers, but they are very, very good to take care of and propagate. Again, I think it's totally worth it because the plant is hailed as being a classic. It's velvety, it's dark, it can have white veins, it can have minimal veins, it can be round, it can be anything you want. So for that reason, I think it's pretty versatile and I honestly don't see it leaving collections anytime soon. Right, I don't know what people are going to think of me for this next suggestion, but the next plant I'm actually going to suggest to you is a good investment, and stay with me, is the Anthurium Waraquinum, also known as the Queen Anthurium. Now you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, why? Why is that a good investment? They're really hard to take care of. And you are right. You are right, they are not the easiest, they don't propagate amazingly, but you can actually make money on them if you happen to have a knack for taking care of them. Obviously you don't know till you try, so there is a bit of a gamble there, but if you just so happen to be able to take care of Queen Anthurium really well, you could buy Queen Anthurium from a friend or from someone selling it online. You could rehabilitate it and get those nice big leaves coming out of it and you could sell it on for quite a bit of cash. Queen Anthurium, in terms of the market, haven't actually gone down in price. And as I've said on previous videos, I do believe this is due to the fact that they're hard to care for. I know myself as a shop, it's a bit difficult bringing them in really because if I buy a load in, I'm going to be waiting quite a long time to get my return on investment and I have to consider basically the space they take up in the shop and the electricity it takes to run them and rehab them. But if you happen to have a knack, so you're good at taking care of Queen Anthuriums, then I think you may have a really good investment opportunity on your hands. They usually go for round about low triple digits, so low three digits digits, but I think there is money to be made. And again, that's not for everybody. That's simply just for people that can take care of them really well. So I realize that's not necessarily out there for everyone. Not everyone wants the stress or the gamble, but if you're feeling a little bit risky, then you might want to give it a go. I suggest you start with one and don't buy in several and see how you get on with that. You can, of course, propagate these plants from what we like to call chunks, so just a bit of stem. Honestly, that takes quite a while from experience, so I think your best bet to get your return is to buy something that someone is struggling with, rehabilitate that, and then sell that on. I think that's a fantastic opportunity for investment. Let's talk about the Syngonium aurea because not a lot of people do and it does have a little bit of a value still. It did last year, it certainly does this year. What am I talking about? Of course I'm talking about the yellow variegated Syngonium, not the white variegated. Do not buy the white variegated, it is out in garden centres, you will not make much money off it, do not bother. But the yellow variegated Syngonium works exactly the same as the white, i.e. it's very easy to take care of, you can propagate it really quickly, you can grow them in water if you want, they are very, very good 
plants and they are selling reasonably well. You can buy them for, I think, anywhere between, again, high double digits and low triple digits. With the variegation being yellow, it has to be said that not everybody loves yellow variegation. I know I do. Do I prefer it over white? Not really. I think it depends on the plan, but that has to be said just in case you are weighing it up, what you'd like to go for. Again, if you'd like some white variegated plants, there are obviously others on this list, but I think you'll get a great turnover on propagation because of the way Syngonium grow. They grow like a massive vine and they root so fast. And as I mentioned just before, you can grow them in water. So given all those reasons, you could probably make a turnaround quite quickly on them. I don't think you'd be waiting too long at all. They're reasonably stable on the market. So if that sounds like like your thing and you like syngonium then i would absolutely give this plant a go so another plant that's actually kind of held its value and i'm a little bit surprised that is the aglaonema pictum tricolor and i was surprised to be quite honest to discover this quite recently but they have held their value so you can pick one up from high doubles to low triple digits now they used to be maybe a little bit more money than that so they have come down but they are still a great investment if you know what you're doing now a lot of people say that they can't take care of these plants very well i think it seems to be hit and miss i think some people just have a knack for them and some don't In my shop I can take care of them reasonably well. I think they like humidity and not too much light in order to look great so there's a little tip for you if you're struggling but generally speaking you can make a good return on these. Not only that but there is a really handy fix for one of the things people don't like about this plant. Something that people don't really like about the plant is that it gets a very long stem and then the leaves sit at the top and there's just nothing. There's just a big gap where there is nothing. Now what you can actually do is you can cut that stem and root it separately. Yes, really, I've tried. It works. So what you can do, if yours gets a little bit leggy, shall we say, you can actually cut that plant and root the head of it as if you were taking a head cutting from another plant. Obviously give it some space on the bottom and then you can cut the other stems into chunks and actually root from those and grow plants so you're actually making good use of the wastage of what you would have cut from your plant so for that reason it's a great purchase in terms of aglaonema pictum tricolor there are different patterns on the leaf generally obviously it's known as the camouflage plant so you can expect to see a lot of camouflage but even i in my shop i have some slightly different flavors and they all look a little bit different so really no two are the same so it could be quite interesting if you've decided that you'd like to take care of those and sell those you can definitely make some money they flower a lot as well actually i've got mine in flower nearly all the time i can't stop them from flowering so there's more opportunities to be made there the main reason i think this plant is worth the investment is because not a lot of people are trying to propagate this plant. Not a lot of people are selling this plant. Do you know what I mean? It hasn't really fallen by the wayside or anything. I just think it's a little bit like the Queen Anthurium. People just get a little bit put off by trying to essentially sell them. So I do think that there is some money to be made there for sure. Okay. So you want to invest in a variegated plant, but you're really worried about dealing with reversion and you think for yourself, okay, double digits is a high investment for me because it is for a lot of people and I totally understand. But you think, okay, I don't like the idea of spending that amount of money on a plant and the variegation just disappearing on me and I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't know how to maintain it. It's too much. But I also want to try. I don't want to not have a variegated plant at all. Well, I have the plant for you and it's held its value quite nicely. That would be the Philodendron Jose Bono. This plant is a gorgeous plant. Mine doesn't really, it doesn't really show you how glorious it can be because those leaves can get really, really big and long and paddly. They're honestly a beautiful, beautiful plant. The awesome thing about the variegation though is that it's essentially stable, which means the plant just grows like that. It is always going to have bits of variegation in it. So you get a really sort of chunky variegation on it and then you can get some really big sectoral pieces on it as well. The plant will emerge with this variegation variegation if you give it good light and it will fade over time so I must state that that lovely white color that it comes in it's not really going to stay there it will fade down but it doesn't completely fade down I would argue it fades down to sort of a minty green color so you always get those markings on the leaves but the new ones will come in really good so I guess if you're wanting to sell one you might want to time it so that your new leaf coming in when you photograph your plant looks really nice and white and just explain to people of course that the plant does fade over time but it will always be very 
variegated. They are a little bit unpredictable in that you don't know if you're going to get sectoral variegation or just a lot of speckles, but I think they're a gorgeous plant and they are still very desirable. You can pick them up, depending on the size of the plant, for high double digits or low treble digits. You can keep this plant small and just keep cutting it and selling it, or you can really, really get this plant large and grow it up a pool or something like that. It's quite a versatile plant. It's a very attractive plant. And I think a lot of people are drawn to it because the variegation, there's no danger of it being lost, essentially. I wouldn't shy away from this plant. I think it's a great, great plant. And I actually don't see it in its full glory quite enough on the internet. So I think we could do with some more of those. So there you have it. Those are my good investment ideas for plants that are, we'll call them a little bit more accessible. Now I realize they're not completely accessible to everyone. I know that high double digits is a lot of money to spend on a plant, absolutely. Especially if you're just coming into this new, but at the same time, if you were to purchase something cheaper than that, unless you found a rare gem, you're not necessarily going to make money on your investment. And if that's the case, you're better off buying something perhaps from a garden center and doing it that way if you'd like to learn about propagation, how to sell plants, how to package plants and things like that. Thank you very much for watching this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video please leave a like down below. It lets me know that I'm making content that you enjoy and if you haven't already subscribed I would love it if you could do so. If you're new here and you're curious to see my shop I will leave a link to a tour in the description and I guess that's it. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye guys.